Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo, and let's throw up the field for Wednesday's feature race at Saratoga. It's for two-year-olds. It's race number four, the $100,000 Rick Violet Stakes, and this race is for New York Breads, Nicole. We got a field of five, and the lone filly in the race, the number five, Ready AP, is the nine-to-five morning line favorite. Very impressive debut winner at Belmont. She was, and we talk a lot on Keeneland Babies and Spa Babies about Phillies really being able to hang with the Colts early. Sometimes the, the kind of physical advantages that Colts have don't show up until later in the two-year-old year into the three-year-old year. Um, so not really thrown by this horse being a filly or by her being the favorite. A lot of interesting pedigrees in this race, some good uh, New York Stallions represented, as well as Kentucky Stallions sires of these New York breads. And some really intriguing comments from Ready AP's trainer, Christophe Clement, in Mike Welsh's Rick Violet Advance, available at DRF.com, about Phillies perhaps being more precocious this type of year and uh, having somewhat of an advantage. One of the Colts she's going to have to beat, however, is the number one, Run Curtis Run. We're going to watch his debut where he and the number four surprise boss throw it down for the final three sixteenths of a mile. On the outside, Run Curtis Run. On the rail, surprise boss. They bump off each other several times this is a really nice battle from these two-year-olds yeah and you know run curtis run got the better of him there in a narrow finish uh showed good speed on debut should handle the rail here in this short field i'm not so worried about the trips for these horses drawn down inside that said i look at this sire line summer front war front and i do think it's a more turfy type pedigree and that debut wasn't an off the turf race so i wonder if that's what run curtis run is ultimately meant for and the dam was also a stakes winner on the turf. Uh, this one has worked a bullet on the main track at Saratoga. Jose Ortiz takes the mount as Irad Ortiz lands on the other Michael Maker trained entrant, the number two, Barizi. Let's watch his career debut at Belmont way back on May the 21st. He was bet to favoritism in this race. He sat off of the pace and he has work to do in the stretch. It looks like this long shot Bali's shade is going to take them wire to wire Barizi eventually wears down this tired pace setter in a professional debut. Yeah, and beat Coinage, one of the other well-regarded horses in this field. Uh, Coinage was back in third that day. Um, Barizi is from the second crop of Leban, who, of course, made such a good start with his two-year-olds last year. Grade one winner, Simply Ravishing. Grade two winner, Keep Me in Mind, in his first crop. Expecting good things from his second crop conceived in New York. Adam's a full sister to closing argument, who was a graded stakes winner as a three-year-old, did very well in the Kentucky Derby his season. Does it concern you that we haven't seen Barizi in two months and there seems to be a gap between the last two workouts? There does seem to be a gap in the work tab, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be really interested to take a closer look at the comments from our colleague Mike Walsh and others in the Clocker Report to see if they thought that this Colt, you know, came back looking like he was ready to fire in those two recent works uh, on the Belmont training track and at Saratoga. The horse in this race with perhaps the most upside is the number three, Coinage. What a lovely pedigree here by the Super Stallion Tappet out of Bar of Gold. Let's watch Coinage's second lifetime start. We saw him finish third to Barisi in his debut. Bet down to seven to ten odds. Once he takes over the lead, he wins like an odds-on shot should. Yeah, just took a clear step forward from that first start to his second. Um, sold well as a yearling, as you would expect with that stellar pedigree that you mentioned. Bar of Gold, just a really terrific race mare. Um, you know, what can you say? She she ran on multiple surfaces. She did win the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, but she could carry that speed a little bit uh, from the strong program of Chester and Mary Broman. And if the track comes up wet, Bar of Gold relished the wet track. So I would think coinage might even move forward if the track comes up less than fast. The four is Surprise Boss. We saw him really battle it out with Run Curtis Run in his career debut. A much improved effort after finishing third to coinage in the race we just saw. He draws outside of Run Curtis Run this time around. And perhaps he'll take up a stalking position and should be in the thick of things when they turn for home. 
Yeah, and I think this is another horse who's very interesting. Uh, still a maiden after two starts, but has obviously held his own with some other well-regarded in this horse horses in this field. Another one who took a clear step forward from his first stop, start to his second, improving his buyer from a 36 to a 65 last time out. As we said, though, that last time out, uh, that race was taken off the turf. And I'm wondering if turf is going to ultimately be the intent with a couple of these horses out of that race. Here's the Philly and the morning line favorite, the number five, Ready AP. Let's watch her career debut on the 1st of July against fellow New York bred Phillies in the very familiar West Point thoroughbred colors. Just taking over the lead at will. You saw Louis Sayas take a peek back once Ready AP made the front, and she just draws away. The buyer speed figure only a 54, but she's only being mildly ridden out by Louis, and we know these two-year-olds can improve by leaps and bounds from start to start from a buyer standpoint. Oh, absolutely. And this filly is running for a bar in the Christophe Clement barn where they really take their time developing their horses. And I do expect to see the improvement from their first start to their second. If anything, I think the way she ran off and hit in her first start was the surprise uh, by a very good two-year-old sire, obviously, in more than ready. And I do want to make one quick point that, you know, she's another horse in this race bred by Chester and Mary Broman as coinage is. And I don't think you should read anything into the fact if you follow Bloodstock that, you know, they they bought back into coinage but sold off Ready AP. I don't think that says anything about the quality of the horses. The Bromans have cut their numbers down a bit recently. I believe Bar of Gold's yearling is in the upcoming Basing Tipton uh, Saratoga yearling sale. And they do buy back into some of the colts they sell just for future valuation purposes as stallions. I don't think there's anything to be read into. Well, they kept this one that sold this one I think that's a really excellent point. Ready AP also draws outside. I think he's going to work out a really good stalking trip from just off the pace. Let's take a look at our topics. You can go in pretty much all five directions. It's that wide open of a race. You're going with Ready AP. Again, just visually impressive. Arguably the most visually impressive horse in the race thus far. Yeah, and you know, uh, just looking at these horses, I thought she was a very obvious horse. I'm not too worried about the trips uh, of these horses in the short field. That said, it does look like there's some speed in the race, and she should be able to work on a nice stalking trip from that outside post. Uh, but really, there's there's not much that would surprise me in this race, including the maiden surprise boss. As we've said, some of these horses have knocked heads already, and we have some little rivalries developing already. Curious to see what we get from the number two, Barizi. A uh, nice debut win, really had to gut it out that last three sixteenths of a mile. I think the additional furlong will help. Curious to see what we get off of the two-month layoff. Maybe a little bit of a value here for Barizi. Arad Ortiz of the two makers lands on this one. Nicole's going with the five. The Philly, five, two, three, and four, two, one, four, three for me. It's the hundred grander. The Rick Violet, your spa babies for Wednesday, and it's presented by Spendthrift.